So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Pero, uh, as uh, Julio mentioned. So, I, I am leading the performance and uh, reliability domain in uh, Client Foundation. So, working closely with uh, Julio in Pandora as well. And uh, today, we'll be uh, taking you through the um up performance uh the performance on the uh, mobile applications so uh let's look on the agenda basically uh, the first part uh, will be uh taking a look on the why the performance is important and taking a look at a few different uh, uh scopes here uh, then i'll be sharing a bit of uh, our pandora approach how we do like uh, on the uh, metrics uh, which performance metrics as well we track also, we'll take you through the reliability metrics and a bit of tooling there. And at the end, we'll finish with uh, uh, some of the key learnings from our side. So let's start. Uh, what is uh, what is performance in the mobile application? So how to define this? So performance is the feeling that the app is fast, responsive, and reliable. In general, users also expect performance as a fundamental property of the app they use. So we can see in this um, uh, statement that it kind of composes of three uh, different uh, parts uh, for the performance, basically to be fast, responsive, and reliable. Uh, but let's look uh, on the other side, so on the user side. In general, mobile users are impatient and intolerant of uh, issues. Uh, there was um, a tech beacon study in 20, uh, 2015 uh, on over 3,000 um, um, users that use uh, mobile applications across uh, Europe and US. And the study tells that 76% of the users uh, shared that the performance, the speed, and the responsiveness of the mobile apps for them is very important or critically important. And also, um, 61% of the users expect the app to start in four seconds or less, and 49 expect the apps to respond in two seconds or less. And also, as I mentioned, the users are intolerant of issues. And also in this study, 53% of the users said that they would uninstall or remove the mobile application with if the application has severe issues, uh, for example, crashes or errors blocking in the user experience. So also a bit of uh, industry uh, insights uh, that was uh, done uh, publicly as well, shared uh, from Facebook that, for example, 1% uh, decrease of the app startup time on uh, they notice a correlation that uh, increases the uh, visitations by 0.27% uh, in their apps. And uh, also on the other side of uh, performance um, uh, metrics, uh, Play Store has publicly as well shared that uh, for every six megabyte upsize increase on the applications on Play Store, uh, there is one percent uh, decrease in uh, install conversion rate. Also, I think uh, there was another publication where um, Facebook also like observed uh, the same kind of uh, drop in uh, conversion rate by increasing the application size as well. So we can learn as well from any size that. Um, uh, this also has very big impact as well on the business metric or the user experience. But how much faster is fast enough? So actually, there were a few studies and uh, researches done by also Microsoft and other companies in the in the history that uh, we can define basically three important limits for the uh, response times. So basically, this. Uh, Three important limits, we can define them as a, uh, different uh, times expectations for certain actions that needs to be completed on the uh, user side. So we can start with uh, 200, 100 to 200 milliseconds, basically, on every user interaction that the app responds in this kind of timeline. Uh, basically, the users will perceive this, this as a fast um, uh, response. And maybe let's take a look, for example, in this screenshot, once the click finger basically uh, acts, that will respond to 200 milliseconds, which I believe most of us, we can see that this is kind of immediate. We perceive as an immediate action. Uh, going to the next one, uh, everything that goes above or maybe to cl close to one second is going to be uh, mentioned as a perceived as a noticeable delay. So we can see here as well from the video that uh, once the user clicks, it takes one second to load the next screen, which is also a kind of, we notice like the human um, uh, perception notice uh, this uh, delay. 
And of course, like long wait, anything that is above three seconds and up to two seconds, it's basically long wait that it's it imposes high risk that the user basically will drop the flow. Uh, so there is another perception here on the performance that there is another concept of perceived performance for the different up flows. So definitely we cannot, users don't expect that the app will be fast to open, for example, in 200 milliseconds, for example, or maybe 500 milliseconds. But rather there's some expectations from the user by using many applications in the real life that they would expect maybe the application to start at, I don't know, two seconds, three seconds. And as I mentioned, this was also outlined in the study. Uh, and also maybe for the noticeable delays, kind of um, uh, enough for the users when changing screens, for example. So also Microsoft defines these kind of um, uh, time limits also related to the user uh, flow and uh, user's expectations. So let's look on uh, our approach in Pandora. So basically we have um, uh, kind of grouped the metrics in uh, four categories. Uh, waiting times, uh, which scopes uh, a lot of um, uh, metrics like kind of upstart to interactive and screen time to interactive as a main uh, metrics that uh, we track. Uh, the next one would be the responsiveness, like overall responsiveness, how the app reacts to user interactions uh, and how smooth is the user experience uh, in the application, for example, navigations, animations, and uh, all of the interactions. Uh, the third one would be uh, download app size. So how, how big is the app uh, that uh, the users are downloading from the official stores? And the very end is the uh, app crashes, which is more close to the reliability side of things. And uh, I think pretty much everyone is, would be aware of this. Um, so in general, our strategy for uh, uh, monitoring, like having this uh, good insights of these uh, metrics is basically, first of all, we, we need to have like good monitoring of performance KPIs on production sample data, which means like this will give us broad uh, insight of uh, the user experience, not just from one side, but also like, as I mentioned, like the, the waiting times in different screens, responsiveness, and also like from the initial start, like the app uh, download. Uh, the next part, we also try to connect the performance KPIs with business metrics, like kind of conversion rate, retention rate, churn rates, for example. And I'll be sharing a bit of uh, some of the outcome that we did uh, one over one year ago um, for measuring um, uh, the conversion rates. And of course, at the end, the most also important part uh, by measuring uh, performance metric is uh, the shift left concept. So tooling to basically detect and prevent performance regressions during development phase, which basically means that uh, at the current stage for some of the metrics, we kind of notify and uh, get alerted maybe and uh, notice these kind of regressions when we are on production. Um, yeah, so just to define a few of these metrics uh, to kind of define them the flow, how it's measured, uh, we'll start with the upstart uh, metric. So the upstart metric is measured from the uh, moment when the user uh, opens the application and then follows uh, the launcher screen basically. In this period, basically we load, uh, we load the main app, initialize some dependencies and configurations. And then uh, what happens next is the home screen it's uh, loaded and the upstart to interactive metric basically will be stopped when the home screen is fully um, uh, loaded and uh, ready to be interactive for the user. Uh, you can notice here that we have subset uh, of metrics uh, under this upstart to interactive. So upstart to interactive is the main metric, but also we have many uh, sub metrics like upstart to first screen and also home screen to interactive. Even though even we have as well like a smaller um, sub metrics here, like uh, snapping for the location, the dependency injection initialization, and some of the third party um, SDK initialization which at the end will tell us like a bit of, uh, will help in the debugging, debugging later when we notice some increases. Uh, moving to screen metrics, uh, the screen start to interactive. Uh, so this is measured, uh, currently we measure mainly on the uh, main screens on the main flow of the application. 
And this is measured from when the user taps on uh, one previous screen. For example, in this case, it's the home screen to open the restaurant listing page and until the restaurant listing page is uh, ready for uh, user interaction. So as I mentioned, uh, we had done a bit of uh, experiment on how uh, performance KPIs impact on the business metrics. And uh, as outlined in this as well, shown in these um, uh, graphs here, we do see correlation between upstart time and uh, the user behavior. So basically we can notice that uh, the user, uh, if the, as the up start increases, the user will, le will less likely go uh, be kind of um, open to go to the next phases of the app. So, uh, but also not all countries have the same drop off rates. So here we can notice that uh, Pakistan has um, a lot less um, uh, are, are a lot less sensitive uh, than the users in, uh, in Norway. So uh, Norway users basically would uh, would expect that the app would be more faster, but uh, Pakistan users would be uh, kind of more resilient to delays in the application. So moving on next to the uh, responsiveness uh, metrics. Uh, in order to understand this, to be able to deep dive into the responsiveness, let's do a step back and understand that most of this has to do with the hardware, basically the human hardware. So our brain is continuously processing visual signals that the eye is sending. So as we can see in this video, if we focus basically on the scrolling of the papers, uh, the concept of uh, motion come from that comes from uh, these still frames is effectively a hack. If we display the images fast enough, we can trick the brain uh, into a perceived motion. But the caveat here is that uh, how fast we display those images, how will have very large effect on how fluid the motion will uh, look to us or be perceived. So in general, uh, from studies like uh, the minimum uh, for humans, um, we'll need like 10 to 12 frames per second before we start to perceive a motion. Uh, usually the sweet spot for the mobile applications would be uh, 60 frames per second in general, like in everything for users to perceive very small, uh, smooth uh, motion. Uh, and uh, usually 25, I think, frames per second is a standard for the movie industry. But what 60 frames per second mean, means for us as a developers? So basically we can do a simple math. Uh, if we divide uh, one second by uh, 60 frames, that means that we only have uh, 16 frame, uh, 60 milliseconds per frame to do all of our work, such that the user will experience uh, smooth um, um, experience motions in the mobile applications. So moving to this, we basically have uh, we track uh, two different uh, responsiveness KPIs for the to outline the responsiveness uh, outcome of the applications. So one is the slow rendering, which is basically kind of also called known as a skipped frames, which will measure um, screens with instances with um, frames that take longer than 60 milliseconds uh, to render. But also there are like some frames that could take a lot longer. So frozen frames, like frames that uh, would uh, take uh, longer than 700 milliseconds. And this is kind of in the balance between the the um, uh, the three limits that we shared, like between the 200 milliseconds and one second. So basically kind of the user will really notice a uh, big delay here of uh, that will being frozen a bit. Uh, so in Pandora, basically, we kind of combined these two metrics as well to come with a responsiveness, single responsiveness score, uh, where it's kind of calculated by taking uh, both skipped and frozen frames into account, into the account and uh, uh, by uh, factoring them of 20% of uh, skipped frames ratio and 80% of the frozen frames. Of course, we put more uh, focus on the weight on the frozen frame ratio because this is kind of the worst, uh, would outline the most worst experience for the users. And here it's imp also interesting to notice that uh, Android would, uh, oh, I believe this would be the case for most mobile applications that the Android will show a bit uh, worse the numbers than uh, comparing to iOS. And this is due to a big part of the uh, device fragmentations and uh, many OS versions that are active and uh, supported by apps and the OS as well, the main manufacturers. Uh, also important here is that uh, uh, we are kind of calculated this responsiveness score per the screens and squads that owns these screens such that they can monitor 
uh, clearly later and uh, have um, uh, checked their like, kind of responsiveness of the area of ownership on their side. Uh, moving on next to the upsize. So basically the Android applications, um, we monitor, as I mentioned, like the download, uh, download upsize from the um, uh, main official stores, App Store and Play Store. And in general, the Android upsize as well in practice would be always 60% smaller than the iOS uh, apps uh, based on the numbers from App Store and Play Store. Uh, Important, I would like here to mention that uh, in Pandora, we basically have built an in-house solution tool to detect upsize regression, so kind of on the strategy of shift left, uh, that uh, runs basically during development phase and will alert on every peer in case there is significant uh, increase of the upsize. And also we'll provide a bit of detailed reports such that the engineers can uh, monitor, like see the increases daily and identify the root causes. Uh, also, like one important uh, part is if you, for example, if the team, like my recommendation here would be that uh, you can start not necessarily with every pull request, but you can start as well monitoring the upsize increases on a daily basis. This is this is how we started and kind of as well uh, noticed a lot of bit increases and then uh, kind of try to do optimizations before we go to production. Uh, moving on to the reliability metrics, um, basically we have, uh, we measure two uh, metrics, uh, crash-free sessions and crash-free users. So, but why we have these uh, two metrics for the crashes? So crash-free sessions uh, and uh, users, basically, they would tell a bit of different uh, perspective and story here, uh, because sessions compared to users, the number of sessions compared to users is much more and will show uh, always like kind of better numbers that we have more crash free uh, crash free sessions, but the users unique users will be much um, more kind of on the uh, lower end of the scale. Um, also, like uh, crash free uh, crash rates are composed of uh, kind of in general would be composed of two different type of uh, crashes and errors that are happening in the apps like unusual unhandled errors, and in some cases as well, out of memory exceptions on iOS and ANRs more specific for Android. Uh, also in Pandora, we have defined uh, three different levels of uh, SLOs for the daily crash-free users. So uh, critical stability that would go below 99% of daily crash-free users, major stability below 99.5, and also target and or aspirational stability that we try to uh, reach always is 99.8 of daily crash-free users. Uh, moving on to the tooling, uh, in general, we use. Fast, no? Yeah. Uh, so, may I ask visa, visa, how much money was Yeah. Okay. So, I'm um, Tim. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, then, uh, on the tooling side, we use basically uh, Sentry in Pandora uh, for observing uh, observability, monitoring, and alerting for uh, both all clients, including web as well. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, recently we moved out, um, we migrated from Crashlytics uh, to Sentry. And I want to give a big shout out to the app reliability team that uh, were done a really great job uh, during this uh, migration and made, made this all of this uh, happen smoothly. Um, but why, why we choose Sentry, for example, over Crashlytics? So there are different four kind of uh, areas why we choose the Sentry. Uh, first of all, there is very advanced, advanced uh, segmentation part where uh, Sentry provides very powerful filtering and searching options and uh, with flexible as well issue grouping configurations that can be done uh, remotely uh, to define different groupings of the issues uh, and also uh, provides out of the box uh, rich metadata and breadcrumbs for insightful uh, root cause analysis. On the other side as well, uh, provides uh, very easily, um, provides custom dashboard that uh, we as users can create a really uh, easy dashboard, uh, easily create a dashboard that can navigate to um, a lot of uh, issues that would give us uh, a lot of uh, uh, good insights. And this is by also using a lot of the uh, detailed segmentations. Also, there is a single uh, release dashboard for monitoring new ongoing releases as well. Uh, provides out, um, enables basically all the squads to autonomously monitor and set up alerts for their area of ownership. And uh, this is also due to the help of automatic and smart issue ownership assignments that all the issues, new and existing issues, basically will be kind of 
assigned to the uh, teams uh, based on the area of where this crash happened. And at the end, of course, the uh, Sentry provides very powerful and detailed uh, alerting system uh, with flexible options and uh, also enables a lot of all the teams to kind of monitor there and alert uh, on issues, high spiking issues on their area of ownership. Uh, so at the end, I would just like to mention a lot of uh, key learnings. So uh, one, the top one I would uh, uh, separate here is the that we need to have clearly defined metrics and reliable observability uh, is key here that we will kind of understand the uh, performance uh, behavior of users on production data. Uh, but also at the same time, like performance can be challenging, but also yet can be fun. Uh, so Android, this also comes from the, as I mentioned earlier, that Android has very fragmented uh, device set. Um, and uh, we need to understand like in which markets our um, apps are used and then according to that, to that adopt. Uh, the debugging can take uh, some time in some cases uh, to, to identify the root causes. And of, co of course, uh, as I mentioned, shift left for the performance KPIs uh, with automated uh, performance testing, it's a bit of challenge. Uh, also, uh, caching uh, is an important part where it's an uh, old but yet effective uh, technique. So uh, try to always, uh, my suggestion would be try to always think of what kind of uh, data you can uh, store on disk or maybe memory and uh, kind of to avoid uh, net doing a lot of unnecessary network calls such that it can speed up uh, the showing content to the users. Uh, and also important is to define clear and uh, well-defined uh, cache expiration policies. Uh, uh, third part is uh, networking. So always pay attention to uh, uh, how many uh, network calls uh, are doing because at the end, uh, network calls are uh, quite expensive on the clients. And uh, also like this is due to the, depending on different network quality as well, users will experience different uh, uh, delays. Uh, also too many, as I mentioned, too many requests, network requests will impact the performance negatively. Try to always par parallelize network uh, calls, but also try to fail fast for non-critical APIs uh, during parallelization with the proper uh, timing out. And also uh, try to uh, reduce the blocking network calls on upstart. For example, maybe you want to load uh, uh, configs, but are they like really critical to be loaded and blocking the upstart? Or we can solve this uh, problem with caching. And at the end is try to be a bit lazy. Initialize, for example, and display uh, UI components when uh, they're needed at the later stage of the user flow, for example. We not, don't need to initialize everything in the first place. Uh, delay initialization of third party SDKs and also inter, um, investigate how they will impact the performance when initializing. Uh, try to think of dependency injection as well. Uh, try to do um, all, always the components, the frameworks on the dependency injection to be initialized at a later stage, not on the always on the upstart. And at the end goes without saying that the, we need to pay attention to keep the main thread uh, free and always um, uh, try to um, uh, have less tasks performing on the main thread. So that's uh, all from my side. Thank you everyone for um, the attention.